Hello and welcome to the Minnesota Motorsports Park, playing host to a round of the TM Master Cup Series for the first time since 2001. In years gone by, names like Dwyer, Roderick, Howard, and Foster were able to conquer the high-speed high banks of this one-mile oval. And now we'll see who among the modern grid can etch their names as being the winner of a new age of racing here in Minnesota. Since the series' last visit, the Dwyer family has purchased the venue and has improved safety standards across the entire grounds. There is a proper pit wall on the front straightaway, including a sand pit, which you would normally see on road courses, and we've already seen its effectiveness in the TM Lights race just the other night. Despite this, some of the drivers have expressed concerns about safety here, especially since they are entering turns 1 and 3 at over 190 miles an hour and having to back down about 40 miles an hour because of setup compromises. These straightaways are very long, and straight line speed is incredibly important here. In the infield in turns 3 and 4, you'll notice that there are a bunch of trees, and some of those were still there from when this track was first built back in 1971, making this the first time this season that teams will be required to use multiple spotters on an oval track. Two other examples of this, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Orling Park. Spotters are not required on the road courses, however, rearward visibility in a TM Master Cup Series car, a modern car at least, is quite good, so it is less of an issue there. We wish all 46 drivers have a very safe race tonight, and we hope that the 160 laps goes by without serious incident. And now, let's run through the starting grid. On the pole, car number 74, Adrian Devereaux, the former three-time champion, bumped Saul Fischel off the pole in the dying minutes of qualifying. That would have been Fischel's third pole in a row. Savarol and Castaneda only made one run in qualifying. Taylor is in row, the inside of row three, along with a very quick Chris Davenport in the second Michelin Sun scar. Ingrid Hadeland is in row four, along with a very fast Packer Carroll. Excellent qualifying effort from the 71 bunch. Welcome back, Chris Johans, in with a promoter's option, and Ryan Matthews in the 06. Gaspar D'Souza and Joe Olenek in row six, looking very strong so far this weekend. Kareem Washington, another promoter's option, along with Scott Bates. Lucas Grabert, the German, excellent effort in qualifying, and the fastest independence trophy car, Phil Perpura. Local boy Kevin Dwyer got the loudest applause in driver introductions. He's in with the promoter's option, along with David Krikorian. The two Volpes of Tom Moore and Alessandro Rossini are in row number 10. Row 11, Zelda Ashby and a new livery on Tony Durbin's car. We will get to that. You have Jenny Kuznetsov and Greg Woodard in row 12. Woodard has been very fast, disappointed with his qualifying effort. Tony Long and Daniel Lechleiter in row 13. Long is another independent trophy driver. Carter Fitzgerald and Chuck Johnson in row 14. Row 15, another promoter's option. Alicia Reyes and Kurt Pliskin back there in 30th. Not a lot of speed in qualifying from the PSI boys, it looks like this week. Liv Eklund in a blue car again in row 16. And Cody Gleason is a replacement driver, but he's there in another promoter's option, car 31. Brandon LaRoe was fastest in final practice. Don't know what he's doing back here. And Gareth Hunt. Friel and Kakinen are both very disappointed to only qualify in row 18. Lonnie Rollins in car 980 back in row 19 along with Craig Yonser. He's an independent trophy car. An independent trophy car has a promoter's option, that being Catherine Williams and Zach Webster in car 87 looking for more. Cooper and Ruiz back in row 21. Ike Durbin and Truman Ellison in row 22. Making his debut is Kenny Myatt in car 70. And Maximus Racing is back. With, uh, that's an independent trophy car this year with Richard Scott. Brad Dwyer, of course, was withdrawn. He was the original driver for car 31. However, after that injury he had at Portland, he uh, was ruled out. And Su Xiaoyu, of course, has been here all weekend. And the Chinese driver did partake in both first and second practices in limited participation. Um, however, he was never intended to actually start the race. That was always supposed to be Chris Johans at the wheel of car 88. Johans has been helping Sue get up to speed for his potential oval debut later on this year. However, tonight it is going to be Adrian Devereaux and Saul Fischel leading this field of 46 to the green. And for the first time since the Bush administration, we are green in Minnesota. As Adrian Devereaux and Fischel both clean into the turn one side by side, there were a couple of stragglers and cars out of line. It looks like everyone's made it through the first couple of turns cleanly. No one trying any unnecessary heroics as Fischl goes to the high line, maybe to save some tires. Luciano Savarol comes through in car number five. Here he comes to take the lead, but here comes Cameron Taylor from Ohio. Taylor fire, fires up into the lead in that seven car. Here comes Hadland. Savarol trying to go oh, run a little bit of a higher line, maybe to save tires. Tire wear is a big concern, but passing on the high line very, very difficult. Most people are going to be able to do it quite easily in on the inside if they have enough space, momentum, and everything of the sort. As here comes Hadland in the 19, uh, the, uh, the Lynx car, the Cariola winner. Hadland out of Norway. Here is Chris Johans as well coming into the frame in the 88 car. Now Chris Johans has had a bit of an extra spring in his step. Uh, he mentioned he was working with Sue to get him up to speed, but Chris Johans and Kevin Sai have 
uh, really enjoyed working with each other. This is only supposed to be a one race deal for Johans to help this team get familiar with how to set up an oval car and how an oval race plays out. But uh, Chris Johans has really seemed to enjoy his time here with, Maggie, with the Maggie Chow KC Racing Team. And particularly because Kevin Sai is uh, a just sort of a bundle of joy, to be, uh, to be perfectly honest, as here comes Castaneda to try to take the lead from Johans. And um, uh, Johans, is, of course, was almost a Master Cup champion back in 2011, but missed out by only a point to Adrian Devereaux. It's a little unfortunate that he's bounced around the series a little bit ever since, but it's good to see Chris Johans back in the Master Cup series in a competitive car. Now here is Tony Durbin in car number 12, the new livery on this car. It's because his primary paint job that he's been running for the rest of the year was rejected by the race promoters on sensitivity grounds. Uh, Tony Durbin, when asked about this, would just accuse anyone of being a, uh, working for the liberal media. I don't know what he means by that, honestly. But um, uh, reporter Tracy Wheeler, one of the only decent people in the media center, I'd like to add, uh, uh, uncovered a video of uh, Benny Dwyer getting into a fist fight with a police officer who was harassing Jimmy B. Green's brother in after a race in 1988 that Green won. Green being one of the more successful black drivers. Uh, in the late 80s. Uh, Tony Durbin, of course, uh, responded with the uh, maturity of uh, a two-year-old when uh, that surfaced. Here is Liv Eklund in car number 11, in, who is running on the inside of Jenny Kuznetsov, and she's all the way up to 12th. Now, she started all the way back in 31st, so Eklund in the 11 car, who has been boasting a lot about uh, this car's performance this weekend, um... Really, uh, maybe all of that talking she did on social media might have something to it. And here is Kareem Washington, the notorious, um, the notorious Kareem, as he likes to be called. Um, no one's really sure where that name came from. I don't even think he knows, but it's stuck regardless. As um, he's running in 19th, uh, very well received by the um, uh, by the crowd here in uh, Minnesota. Of course, Washington uh, has lived in the area previously, and. Uh, uh, here he is coming on Joe Lennick and Ryan Matthews, two uh, drivers who are also decently well received that I don't think many people would have expected to be uh, received warmly. Here is Lucas Grabert in the 34 car now. Uh, as if he, as if this sponsor, new uh, Qualtum sponsorship isn't already bad enough curse with a car catching on fire in Wales. This is what that car is supposed to look like and he has some issues already. Um, the uh, good thing is, new sponsor Qualtum has taken this in, um, has taken these uh, issues that the team is having in good stride. Uh, they don't seem to be that discouraged. Here is Saul Fischel in car number eight, working his way up to second. The championship leader has been extremely critical of race stewarding recently, particularly for the very light punishment that Ingrid Hadland received for the incident at the Round of Wales. And Fischel uh, is, uh, believes that the penalty Hadland gotten should have meant that she was excluded from the following race. Um, I find that a little bit harsh, perhaps, but uh, uh, official believes that that uh, contact was 100% intentional, and uh, believes that the and has said that the stewards uh, need to actually take some decent stands on things, uh, especially when uh, contact like, like that could escalate and get out of hand. I'm not going to say he doesn't have a point there a little bit, but I think uh, the conclusions he's coming to are a little bit extreme, perhaps, as he goes into the lead of the race. Is Hadland moving up, and here is Rossini in car number three. Oh, he's not going to try four wide to turn one, is he? Oh, Rossini, is he going to go for it? Is he going to go? No, that he's backing off. Oh! Oh, Rossini, the tail got out from under him. What a save by Alessandro Rossini. Uh, the, when the back end of that car stepped out, and he was able to back out of it and catch the car, and that's better than winding up with a wrecked race car. Oh, we got a problem here with Connor Freel in car number 68. That looks like a puncture, as the journeyman out of Texas having a pretty rough weekend so far. He's had a lot of handling problems. Freel needs a drama-free weekend, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to get it this week. Rossini now has gotten into the lead now in the three car. The Italian has uh, had a bit of a slow start to the season. It's a little surprising, especially since how well he's done the last couple of years. Here is uh, Taylor and uh, Castaneda trying to reel him down. Uh, the Volpe racing team in general has looked a little bit off as far as pace is concerned ever since the European Tour started. Hopefully things will pick up for them back uh, in, when we get to the States because the Volpe, uh, we do believe, is one of the better, um, uh, may have one of the better short oval packages, especially uh, uh, given how well they did earlier in the year, particularly Los Angeles, where they won. Here is Kevin Dwyer, of course, the man who got the loudest um, uh, approval from the crowd, the Royal Blue 72. Of course, uh, at Indy, he uh, started and finished 23rd. Uh, didn't exactly have the race he uh, was hoping he'd have, but um, pace was certainly not, uh, not a, a problem there uh, for Dwyer relative to the rest of the field, that is. Uh, that is a very, very tough race to be competitive in. 
And of course, right after this race, he's going over to France because, uh, to get ready for Le Mans. So Kevin Dwyer has got a, a very intense couple of weeks ahead of him. As uh, speaking of French drivers, uh, Adrian Devereaux is coming in the 74 car. Dwyer, of, um, Dwyer's father, Benny, of, has, uh, run that, has uh, run Le Mans before. But uh, I, uh, of course, Kevin hopes to, to win the race. Here comes uh, Cameron Taylor and uh, Johans back there. I see uh, we have uh, Rossini back there as well. And Eklund's worked her way into the top 10, it looks like, and in the 11 car. So this uh, battle at the front here could get pretty interesting because we have a bunch of cars that started a little further back, working their way forwards. Here comes Taylor in the 7 car. Uh, Dwyer lets him go without too much of a fight. Here is Grabert again. Um, as you see that, you might have seen the leaders in the background. Uh, the stewards are looking at this car to see if he's able to make uh, a minimum speed, which is admittedly an arbitrary thing. However, uh, Lucas Grabert has been one of the more gentlemanly lapped cars in um, uh, in some of the earlier races. The rookie uh, is actually, at, uh, when earlier in the season, we or before the season started rather, we uh, suspected that Grabert's performances would be very hard to judge as we look at Joe Olenek running in third. But uh, most of the field has actually expressed a lot of approval of, Grab of how well Grabert has done in that 34 car as uh, they're got starting to lap him now. Um, Melenic up in the second as uh, Chris Johans, the leader, gets by him without an issue. Grabert is, still looks like he's going to stay in one line. That's what you want. Uh, you don't want a lap car moving suddenly. That can cause all sorts of problems um, as Kevin Dwyer goes by him without an issue. Uh, and especially, it's uh, this especially disappointing because uh, Grabert and teammate Packer Carroll both qualified pretty well. Uh, of course, they both dropped through the field, but uh, uh, there is a lot of pace improvements over there at uh, the Lawrence Gravity team. Uh, some people, uh, there is uh, some people uh, suspecting that there might be funding issues with this team, but uh, that doesn't appear to be the case. Fischl getting held up by him, um, getting held up by Grabert just a little bit, but uh, that's kind of inevitable, especially in a track with his narrow over racing line. And I do mean that sort of a relatively speaking, uh, as uh, this track is. Uh, but Grabert holding his own, or uh, holding uh, holding his line. That's what you want. Here is Washington in the 47, uh, beginning to mark, ma march his way forwards a little bit, and that's Tony Durbin. He has in tow. Uh, Washington. Now, some people are expecting um, an announcement to come um, later in the year that Washington will be. Uh, uh, driving for the Michelin Suns full time in the 20 in the 2020, but we don't know how we don't know who he uh, displays. Uh, obviously, that would mean Davenport, but we'd have to see. Of course, Washington is one of the few drivers in tonight's race who was running the TM Lights race the other night, and uh, he was involved in a uh, in a crash late in, late in the event there, and he is no longer the points leader in that in uh, the TM Lights series. Here's Greg Woodard in the 41. Uh, now he's uh, come all the way up to 19th in this uh, uh, 41 Woodard trucking car. And that's David Krikorian in tow. Arto Kekkonen back there as well. Of course, Kekkonen uh, starts start at the back because he uh, pushed too hard to, for a second run in qualifying and ended up hitting the wall. So that didn't exactly help him out. Help him out all that much. Here is another, here's, oh, independent trophy uh, contender Tony Long. He, he was trying to get into the pit lane, but I guess he didn't signal to Ike Durbin that he was coming in. So he's going to have to go around again. That's going to be a big, that's uh, that's a big, big cost, uh, a big, um, his race is coming undone there. I can do English today. Um, one of these days, sometimes you know where words fail you sometimes uh, when they shouldn't. Um, as uh, uh, the field's coming to put a lap on Williams in the 93. Catherine Williams having, um, this is uh, her, her home race, last, uh, last we, we believe, her last promoter's option of the year for the 93 bunch. Um, as Kevin Dwyer going for the lead, he backs out of it. Um, think, to my, think Dwyer what, might not have been confident in the amount of grip he had to make that move stick. Looking back at an independent, two more independent trophy contenders, that is Lonnie Rollins in the 980 car and the 21 Phil Purpura. Both of them were in Cariala in, very, in different events, the Consolation Race and the, and the Cariala Grand Prix itself. Purpura's results at the Cariala Grand Prix will not count towards his independent trophy run because he is a late addition to the independent trophy. Uh, that is a... Um, uh, here is Richard Scott in the 92. Now this car would normally be a Tenere, however he crashed after um, he crashed in practice twice, and so that rode off both his pri both the primary and and the and the backup car. So this is actually a Lynx car from two years ago that uh, they purchased at the last minute, got it ready to qualify, just got it up to speed in time to uh, got it up to, enough up to speed to uh, qualify it. And the 31 car is another replacement. Cody Gleason, of course, is in this race because Brad Dwyer was injured in Portland. Um, 
Uh, Cody Gleason, of course, has a lot of uh, connections. We should have seen more of him later in the year, as here is Zelda Ashby in the 55 car. Uh, as the legend of Zelda Ashby continues, she continues to uh, sort of impress everyone by flying under the radar and uh, putting in some excellent performances in some cars people may not expect to get or her to get the most out of. She's, just, she's actually leading right now, officials going by, um, but uh, she has done an exceptionally good job uh, so far in that Black Diamond car, sort of flying under the radar and building that team up along with Luciano Savarol. Of course, Ashby did have a run at the championship um, a few years ago, but uh, of course that came apart in the final race as Fischl is entering the pits. Fischl, car number eight, is headed into the pit lane as uh, here comes Cameron Taylor to uh, lead the lap from Ashby, of course. Um, leading a lap does not give you any bonus points or anything, but there is bonus money involved, and that's usually the incentive for that. Um, here is... Uh, uh, Taylor in along with Kevin Dwyer. That's Chuck Johnson, the brown car up there. Uh, here is Eklund now who's staying, who's uh, continuing to run along with Johans, Castaneda, Ashby, and uh, now this 11 car. That is the uh, sort of the uh, livery she ran earlier in the year at uh, Los Angeles, of course. She's running a blue car at the night race, we believe, and she's entering the pit lane really slow. Whoa! Johans almost into the back of the 11. May have just touched her slightly. Uh, I wonder if Eklund may not have been uh, very comfortable with that car, but um, uh, she's been a little skittish entering this pit lane and very apprehensive about it um, all throughout the weekend. Uh, you see Chris Johans reassuring, uh, we believe that was Kevin Sy on the radio with him. There's Cooper entering the pits as they've run long. Chris Davenport in the 17. Uh, Chris Davenport in the 17 car uh, is uh, should be in a very good position because not a whole lot of pit lane traffic. Right now, Richard Scott is being scored in 12th place. Um, that's not a uh, not a mistake there. That on the part of scoring. Oh, Rossini pinched. Oh, Rossini tried to maybe get him around the outside a bit. That didn't didn't go uh, didn't go to plan. Rossini gives him the place back. Here is the full running order on the uh, left side. As uh, Luciano Savarol in the five is currently has a huge lead, and um, I think the uh, reason for that is. Um, because Savarol just had the fewest traffic leaving, uh, entering and exiting the pits, had the fewest mishaps, easy, and um, uh, as you see, Savarol very happy about that. Uh, but if he had, didn't have a whole lot of traffic in the pit lane. But here's uh, Carter Fitzgerald in the 60 car and Tony Durbin, this is a battle for position. Fitzy, as uh, most of the greatest beginning to call her, is um, actually didn't have much, uh, had a little bit of traffic, but the Matthews Motorsport team absolutely nailed the stop in that 60 car. And she, is, she has been flying ever since. Fitzgerald has been a somewhat of a revelation here because um, it's it's almost, it, it's almost rare that you see a female driver come through the development ranks without a Lynx connection these days uh, because uh, Lynx Racing's uh, driver development program is just so massive that um, and, and so robust that the, there tend to be a lot of very strong drivers that come out of it, uh, especially in the Master Cup Series, which is where they are the most prevalent. As here is Rollins, who is also, you may, you may have noticed, he is well up the running order. Very little pit traffic and a very, very, uh, and a very good uh, pit crew over the wall crew with this 980 car. Some of it is comprised of some TM Lights guys. Of course, Retro Rollins himself has uh, been competing in a little bit in the past. Here is Krikorian and Rossini to go by. Those are battles for position. This is but the uh, between Davenport and Hadland for second. Um... Okay, so there's apparently an incident being looked at where uh, Eklund apparently merged out of the pit lane to suddenly. Uh, that's we're being told that uh, that's been reported by multi by uh, not just uh, the a the number eight car. A couple of other uh, uh, spotters did call that in. Uh, so that's what we understand, anyways. As Adeline doing battle with Davenport, Adeline going to take the place. Looks like Davenport has been looked like he's in a position to win a race so far. Um, but he's just uh, a little bit of rotten luck has come his way. Um, uh, or he's just, you know, or there's just been other people that have run faster. Here's Ken Myatt making his Master Cup debut. Started, in the la started last, or on the last row rather, and he is up to 19th. So uh, points from last is not bad, especially since, um, well, Tenera's coming off its strongest weekend of the year, and I think probably its strongest weekend it will have this year. I, d I think that's a safe prediction. Um, and there's the ish warning to car 11 that usually those some those could be more than just warnings sometimes if that's coming out from the uh the stewards like that but here is uh, but ken maya having a uh or kenny maya having a good weekend so far because nietzsche have in trouble in the 15. uh he is off the pace it looks like and 
I... Uh, and I don't know why the, um... And Eklund appears confused about the, uh, about the warning. Well, I think that, I think we're gonna, oh, you can see they're, they're closing on Kuznetsa very quickly here. I think they may have to, they may have to black flag him here. Uh, because he is well off the, holding up his team owner, uh, team owner. I don't think that's, uh, the intention there, but, uh, he's waving him by. He just, he's used, when someone's, uh, I was waiting for that. Um, of course, remember, the minimum speed warnings are, all, are discretionary. In fact, most of the, in fact, warnings tend to be, but, um, uh, anyways, Luciano Sauver all lead, um, out in the lead now. He's got nobody really around him, and his pace is, uh, he's holding the same, pa uh, similar pace he was in the first run, which is, um, should be concerning for the rest of the field, anyways. Adeland and Davenport are doing battle with each other, um, and all of this battling between each other. Uh, they could be burning their tires off a lot quicker than Luciano Savarol is, which means they could have a harder time running him down uh, late in the, especially late in the run. But at the same time, they are getting uh, some very good drafts off each other on the front straightaway. Now here is Li uh, Liv, Liv Eklund. Of course, we're looking at her because she's running in fourth. And also Lynx Racing, the team she drives for, became a co-op. Um, and uh, in other words, what that means is that... Um, the uh, the ownership of the team it will no longer be owned by just one individual person it will be owned by everyone who works there the first internal elections for all management management positions except for two will be held early in the next week of course uh, the only two that aren't are for laura farenbacher who's uh, team principal and claire ausie both of whose positions were elected earlier in the year as you saw kuznetsov entering the pits uh they've always had a semi um uh, democratic uh, functionality for senior management over there, but now that is going through all management positions. With Alcia and Fahrenbacher uh, maintaining their uh, positions in the team. It'll be interesting to see how that uh, that kid keeps playing out. I saw Adrian Devereux there. He's running in sixth, and here is um, uh, Rollins again. He's still running in the points in this 980 car, so uh, pitting a little earlier might not be a bad strategy, or at the very least, Hitting when there's as few car, few other cars in there to hold you up as possible, and I think that might be um, that might be uh, why uh, that might be the big uh, secret here. Uh, that has been, that has decided many Master Cup races in the past. It's decided Cariola a couple of times, uh, but um, not a whole lot you can really do about that uh, per se. Uh, as um, official is now having to hold off Devereaux. As uh, official looks like he's burned his tires off very quickly in this eight car. Because he's very, very fast at the start of these tire runs, but he's just burning them off very quickly, and it's just falling off a lot quicker than everyone else. As we see Connor Friel leaving the pits in car 68, this is a scheduled pit stop reminder because he had that puncture earlier, and uh, he is off cycle. Given about when he pits, that should determine when about everyone else pits, and that's about halfway through the fuel and tire run, so uh, that should be a good barometer for the rest of the field. As here's Luciano Salvaro closing in on foot Phil, Phil Carpira, a lap down in the 21 car. That's sort of tomato orange colored car. Uh, tomato orange and kind of wood color on the, or oak wood color on the uh, 21 car. As Salvaro goes by, here is again the battle for second, which is heat, which has been really hot all race long. Davenport and Hadland have really gone back and forth at each other all race. And uh, it's been great to see, but you just wonder how much they're costing each other at this point. Kuznetsov in the 15 looks like they may have resolved whatever problem they've had. And now you have the conundrum of a lap car faster than the leader. And uh, I don't think Savarol is going to be... Uh, Savarol might not want to hold him up that much because he's got a lot more to lose than Kuznetsov does. Uh, I think he's best letting letting him go. And yep, there you go. That's exactly what he does. Luciano Savarol has uh, lost enough races... Uh, uh, to uh, no, to understand that as Eklund has been uh, still gradually pulling away, or no, actually I don't think she has. Uh, no, stopwatch is actually three tenths slower. So Eklund is getting reeled in, looks like by the group behind her. That's Devereaux, but uh, yeah, she she was three tenths slower than her previous lap. So I wonder if she had a bit of a wiggle somewhere that we just didn't notice. Uh, but uh, Eklund has had a, a pretty good a pretty good run so far because remember she started well deep in the field. Here is Long in in the 191 car, not having the uh, not having the finest race but, uh, so far, but it's incident free so, uh, so far. And uh, sometimes for new for newer teams, that's all you can really expect. And for that for that, I say it's it might not be uh, the best run on the result sheet, but uh, you, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, as uh, Hadland back into second place, and um, uh, Chris Davenport, of course, goes but relegated to third. Here is Eklund around Pierre Pierre. Now, I've noticed Eklund's been very timid with some of the lap cars. 
I've noted we noticed that in Wales where uh, she was very apologetic over the radio. And what I mean, um, uh, she was taking it easy with lap cars. I mean with lap cars behind her, not people who were in front of her, which was an issue that um, that she that uh, was that was that there was in Los Angeles. As here is Davenport who's pitting from second or pinning from third, I should say. Um, scoring was taking a while to update. We're having some issues with scoring updating, it looks like. As Fischl is also in, in car number eight. Uh, Fischl having a pretty good run so far, the uh, championship leader. Savaral so slowing, it looks like he's coming in. Um, in the five, the Atlantis machine. Of course, um, Atlantis will be pretty excited about this. It's uh, company headquartered out of the Midwest. As also we see Hadland in in the 19 car. Rollins is in in the 980, Devereaux is in. Here comes Tom Moore in the four. The Los Angeles winner, the winner at the Maxwell Center. Uh, is uh, Tom Moore, who is uh, one of the better short track drivers on the circuit, coming in in that uh, number four car. Uh, we, we've uh, waited to see a lot more from him. He's been fairly quiet this year, outside from his uh, maiden, maiden victory, but uh, sometimes those things will happen. As Savaral, after the uh, pit cycle, Still maintains the lead, and uh, you, you see the 23 car where he is. That's because uh, there was some traffic and a bit of a slow pit stop for Olenek and also for Castaneda as well. So um, Savaral really, really taking the, taking the fight to the rest of the field here. Uh, they have uh, pit, uh, pit stops are not an issue for uh, Luciano Savaral's bunch. The lead of, of, that Savaral has over Hadland has grown a little bit. And um, that is honestly a bit of a surprise. Meanwhile, Hadeland is getting held up a bit by Connor Friel. She had it back onto the throttle a bit early. Friel's gonna let her go on the inside. The Texan doing his best to stay out of the way and stay out of trouble. He's had a rough evening with a lot of handling problems. As uh, Krikorian now doing battle with Adrian Devereaux. Uh, of course, Devereaux put in the recommendation to Hodges Walter Racing that they should hire Krikorian as his replacement on his, on his way out the door. So, so I think, um, uh, I think, I, honestly, I think Hot as Walter Racing made, uh, made a good decision there. And um, uh, it also shows uh, the character of um, uh, Devereaux's character there a little bit. As here is Greg Woodard in the 41 car, who's up to 10th. Uh, a solid point say is what Woodard needs. He, they have not had the start to the year that I think uh, some people expected, especially after how well 2018 went for PSI. However, I think uh, Woodard is just getting rolling. Uh, Power Sing Incorporated believes that their performances will improve drastically later in late in the year. Uh, we think. We think that's what. The, we think that's uh, how uh, they had a press release where they implied they strongly implied that was the case. Anyways, here is Davenport now, who has gotten his way around Hadland, but he's got he has a problem in front of him called cars that are a lap behind him that are actually racing each other for position, um, which is not an unnormal, which is not an abnormal thing for an oval. Uh, Davenport. Closing in on Scott Bates in the 6, and Kurt Pliskin in the 16, who's had a bit of a rough night. Here's Eklund in the 11. Uh, she is uh, getting caught up behind uh, that Ike Durbin, but she's also got Arto Kekkonen inside, and Rossini on the high side. Uh, where do you go if your uh, Ike Durbin holds the middle? Eklund lets everyone go by as Rossini takes fourth away from Eklund. Rossini having a good night tonight in the uh, number three Aperture Science Volpe. As we look back at Ashby, who is running back in P11. Uh, there is Lecklider in the 10. Of course, the uh, surprise winner at Wales, Ryan Matthews. Oh, there go oh, there goes something. We got smoke coming out the back of the 55. It's over. Zelda Ashby at this late stage of the race, we have 30 laps to go, is going to be our first retirement because all, 40, all uh, 46 cars are still running, at least until right now. She's pulled it off the track, so I don't think there's going to be a caution. No caution. Uh, uh, they say Ashby's well out of the out of the out of danger. Uh, that's that's certainly a good thing because that could uh, wreak havoc at this stage of the race. Here is Davenport uh, in second with Hadland right behind him in third. Now we've seen this battle uh, quite a bit uh, tonight as they go by Cooper, who is giving them plenty of space. Uh, needless to say, as. Uh, Hadland trying to close in on Davenport to get a run on him. As Davenport is trying to get some draft off Taylor, I don't think that's going to quite work, though. Uh, Hadland's going to be uh, just going to go right on by, take second. Uh, if she's able to clear him, that is, uh, in that 19 car. As here is Savaral in the five. He's, he's, uh, had, he's pulled well away from everyone else. Uh, that, he's, that he was really running with. Lennox staying ahead of him right now in the 23 car. I don't think Savarell's made any... Re oh, Luciano Savarell's pitting. 
I think they're that, that's a bet. Uh, the, the team is betting now that they're going to run the rest of the race with no yellows, um, which uh, at this point it's not a bad call to make because they're not it because on fuel no one can make it to the end of the race from here. Rossini is coming in in the three car. That's uh, not surprising. Of course, Cameron Taylor in the seven. He's as far back down as he is because of pit lane traffic. That's a story you can tell for most people that were that look like they're uh, way behind where they. Uh, air quotes should be unquotes uh Adeland in the 19 trying to get by the seven but uh i don't think he's going to be that uh keen to let her by because right now she's leading the race and that would be he gets a lap back rollins still hanging in the points in that 980 car keeping an update on him because this is a great run great run of debut for alani rollins and for that uh, 980 bunch hunt is still up in the uh garth hunt still up in the mix as well as we've got myatt coming in in the 70 um, uh, Myatt pitting a little early. Uh, that was one of the other uh, cars we that was running well ahead of where we would normally expect them. As Ryan Matthews and Kevin Dwyer do battle for, I do believe that's 11th. Fischl is in the pits, it looks like. Yep, here comes, that was Fischl coming into the pits. That looks like, a, that looks scheduled to me. Uh, Fischl peeling off in that eight car to uh, pit for what could be the final time, looking to see back if anyone's coming in with him. Doesn't look like it. Uh, this could be a uh, pretty good stop for Fischl as far as traffic is concerned. And he's not going to have to worry about anyone holding him up on the way out. That could be huge uh, later on. As here we have uh, Davenport and uh, Hadland resuming uh, where they left off. Um, of course, they haven't been in for their final stops yet. There is Taylor in the 7 car with them. Uh, and they've got uh, that's uh, Brandon LaRoe, the 25 right there that uh, Davenport's going by. Of course, some of these cars here are racing for position. Davenport's going to have to get around them quickly as possible oh he might not have wanted to make that move i don't think uh, he had enough left in the front tires to really make that stick but um didn't exactly back out of it okay davenport's backing out of it here he comes chris davenport's coming in for the final time in the 17 now the we're gonna see what hadland is able to do uh, and see if um uh, this uh, of course the course stays green here's tony durbin in the 12 coming in he's uh, he's been running in the top 10 for um most of the race, wonder who he's going to be angry at after the race for who knows what, as Hadland is peeling off in the 19. Oh, contact! Brandon LaRose in the wall, Scott Bates gets into the back of him, and that is Cody Gleason in the 31. Nowhere to go for Gleason, Gle uh, LaRose, they're all holding the Brit, and someone else got into the 31. We'll see what happened here, but this changes everything, and LaRose is slowing to come off into the pits. And I think Scott and Bates ran right into the back of him. There is the 31. Kekin got a piece of that, I think, in the one. Uh, anyways, here is on board. This is on board yet, I do believe. Oh, and Gleason, after he got tagged, I uh, slid down the banking a little bit and um, nowhere to go for Castaneda. When you're on the apron, you just kind of get thrown back up and it, you, it doesn't really uh, work quite as well as you think. Now, here's Scott. Oh, yeah, LaRoe and LaRoe is slowing to come off. Scott Bates had the 87 car of Webster right to his outside. So if he pulled to the, if he slowed up any more than he did and pulled to the outside, he was going to hook the 87. And you can see, yeah, the steering is broken on that car. Scott Bates is definitely out of it. Here's Tom Moore in the four. I think he also got a piece of that. And um, because of when this yellow came out and because of where the leader is, this is going to throw the running order into uh, a lot of confusion. I think there's a lot of people that aren't quite sure where they're, where they're running right now is here's on board the 19 where when do the yep, that's when the yellow's out i don't think that now i don't think she's gonna i don't think that's gonna be counted as entering a closed pit because that's not quite how um pits don't exactly close here so and that was what was mentioned in the driver's meeting we understand uh it's different pit lane procedures depending on the circuit but the uh, uh, there's definitely some confusion going on here because um we have some people thinking that you know, Savaral, the the five car, Luciano Savaral and and, uh, and that bunch think they're in the lead of the race, and I think uh, I don't believe he is because he should be. What I'm seeing is Savaral is either at the I believe he's at the tail end of the lead lap because and uh, Rossini is also being shown is not on the lead lap right now um, because of. Um, when Ingrid Hadland was in the pits and when she would have uh, taken the caution which was in the pits and this is a big uh, 
This is a big running orders on the left. Keep in mind, a lot of those cars are being listed at the tail end of the lead lap and will be in front of Hadland on the restart. This is an old rule that nobody has ever been able to find any consensus to how to amend. And uh, we have just, we're going to have just 10 laps to, or 11 laps to go on this restart with Hadland leading and Eklund in second. I have a feeling this uh, finish is going to be contested to say the least, especially given when that yellow came out. Um, uh, anyways, Hadland leading uh, right now. We're watching for the 11. Eklund is pinned on the high side right now. Adrian Devereaux back there as well. David Krikorian is in the mix for, uh, for this as well. And there are some cars who have been well out of it all night long. We haven't seen much of that are now in con that could be just thrown in contention of it be based on strategy. That's how these things go sometimes, and that's just how the cookie crumbles. Um, but they're but to love to see uh, if Adeline's able to hold on. Cooper mounting a challenge here because I think they want to get up and uh, get some extra positions away. But Cooper not ma uh, making that move. Adeline beginning to pull away a bit from Ackland and any other cars. I think she really has to worry about. Uh, we're gonna see. Oh, it's Washington. She's three wide in the middle, trying to get around Davenport in the 17. Familiar uh, sight tonight. Um, and now here we're looking back at Ackland. That's Devereaux behind her. In the 74, that's who she. That's one driver she's worried about. David Krikorian back there in the 13. She also has to worry about Reyes. Is also being shown um, up in this fight as well in the 99 car. So uh, this is uh, we could have a big result for all three Lynx cars. And Reyes has been well out, off the pace most of the night. As uh, uh, Eklund uh, now pulling to the inside to get behind the similarly colored car, of Craig Yancer uh, almost. Um, uh, and now she's got Grabert behind her in the 34. She's put a couple of cars between herself and Krikorian uh, and Devereaux, and she's now going to try to hunt down her teammate, but Hadland is well up the road by this point. Uh, as uh, there is the 17, as uh, here comes the 13. David Krikorian, that car is a little hard to see. It's a blue and orange and gray car. Uh, ha Eklund's going to be well, is going to be on the outside, and DK might have enough uh, space to, enough space and time to take second away. I think, um, Battle for P1 might already be in the books here, but DK throwing it in the inside. Oh, the rear end stepped out from him. Big, big slide that he had to correct uh, for David Krikorian. And here comes Adrian Dever with a little bit of momentum on the outside. Reyes is back there in the 99, trying to make up some ground. Um, as Krikorian now challenging Eklund for second again. Comes on the inside. Going to throw this one into the first turn, see if he's able to make it stick. Uh, Eklund not get, gives him just enough space, but it doesn't look like he's able to make that one stick anyway. Uh, Eklund really, really pushing him hard for, uh, really making him work hard for this, uh, because there's not, there's not a lot of time left. She absolutely has to. Is Eklund gonna try uh, force this four wide? No. DK is gonna have to go way further down to the inside to try this one again, and he might have it this time. Oh, it steps out again. Very, very. Uh, that's not a, not the most comfortable car it looks like uh, right now, and DK is gonna have to back out of that. And that, uh, that bit of momentum is going to cost him. It's, it's jammed up Adrian Devereaux a bit. Here comes Reyes, who, as I mentioned earlier, has been well down the order for most of the night. Uh, and if, uh, she is, uh, if anyone's going to be a beneficiary of this, it's definitely going to be Reyes because, uh, because this, uh, she, again, she was well out of it, not even in contention for points uh, for most of the night because uh, too much traffic in the pits, honestly. Devereaux stuck behind Kuznetsov a bit. And Reyes now beginning to show some short uh, some good short run speed. She's sitting uh, fourth in TM Lights points this year, so uh, she certainly has a lot to speak for herself. Uh, for herself. But uh, Ingrid Hadeland is just half a lap away from claiming her second win of the year, going by Luciano Savarol, putting him a lap down, uh, putting an end to that argument as to who uh, should be winning this race. Ingrid Hadeland comes off the final corner, gets around Fischl, and takes the win for the round of Minnesota. Hadeland ending all conversations on who should be winning this race by doing so on track. That being said, Luciano Savarol and Saul Fischl's teams have both appealed the finishing order on the basis of where Hadeland was when she took the caution. No appeal was lodged by the Volpe Racing Team regarding Rossini's position on the final restart. If you were hoping that those were the only things that could change with the race results, unfortunately, you would be mistaken. After post-race technical inspection, Liv Eklund and Alicia Reyes's cars were both disqualified for having, quote, illegal electronic components, unquote. We'll get back to the details on that in just a bit. But as it stands right now, David Krikorian and Joe Lennick complete the podium. There was a very close battle for fourth right at the end of the race between Kevin Dwyer, Adrian Devereaux, Cameron Taylor, Ryan Matthews, and Chris Johans. One out, as you can see, by Dwyer. 
a good result for him in front of the home crowd. Carter Fitzgerald continues to impress after a strong finish here tonight, and Arto Kekkonen was the last car scored on the lead lap for now as he rounds out the top 10. Barring any more insanity, Luciano Savarol uh, will have to settle for 11th place. That is still a good points haul for him, but not nearly what he was looking for, uh, especially after leading almost half the race. Greg Woodard uh, will be uh, right behind him. Kareem Washington, a solid run for him tonight. Chris Davenport, that caution really uh, turned his race upside down, and that was uh, going to be a potential podium that uh, went by the wayside for him. Strong finish there for Cooper as well. They came from uh, well back in uh, row 21. And I can say the exact same things about Timothy Ruiz, who started 42nd, came all the way up and got some points. Good quiet evening for him. That's exactly what he needed. He's having a very strong year, despite flying under the radar most weeks. Daniel Lechleiter follows up his first win with more points, which I think is exactly what he and Tenere Motorsports were looking for this week. Philip Purpura is scored in 20th and, as it stands right now, of course, Garth Hunt and Alessandro Rossini round out the points finishers. Remember, Rossini's team did not appeal their finishing position, and I have a feeling part of that is because they actually understand how to read a scoring monitor. Uh, be that as it may, Tony Durbin, Tom Moore, and Saul Fischel were the next three cars behind him. Before we move on, I want to revisit the reasons that Eklund and Reyes were disqualified. The notice we received from the stewards said that the onboard computers of cars 11 and 99 were displaying an inconsistent amount of battery life remaining in a way that could only be done by directly manipulating what some of the sensors were reporting. Which, if that's true, could mean that most of the other inspection data that the stewards get using the onboard computer could be unreliable. One final point on this. Lynx Racing are the only team to still use the old Buxton Powerworks batteries. And while those are legal, most teams don't use them because of how much they weigh, almost twice as much as any other battery that is uh, currently approved for Master Cup competition. As it stands right now, this is what the Drivers' Championship looks like. Saul Fischel, the rookie, still leads the championship on 303 points. Adrian Devereaux in second, Chris Davenport in third, two Bitchell and Sons drivers. Ingrid Hadeland, after a win tonight, is in fourth. Cameron Taylor, Fischel's teammate, up in fifth. Kurt Pliskin in sixth. Liv Eklund would be all the way up in seventh if her result gets reinstated. Uh, Marco Castaneda in eighth. A strong season so far for the Mexican rookie. He's been flying under the radar a little bit, but Castaneda is still having a very strong season. Don't count him out just yet. Tom Moore is having a good season as well in ninth in his first year with Volpe. Uh, after the win at Los Angeles, a little bit of a drop-off for Moore, but uh, he's looked very strong uh, tonight despite the fact that he didn't get the result he was looking for. And Joe Olenek rounds out the top ten, continuing to pile on the points in his first season at Hodges Walter Racing without too many mistakes to speak of. With better luck, David Krikorian would be way higher than 11th in the championship. Ryan Matthews is probably thrilled with his start to the year in 12th. Arto Kakinen having a bit of a slower start to the season than I think we all expected. Evgeny Kuznetsov has already accomplished his, the goal that they had for him this year, which is win his first race. 15th in the championship will be small consolation for Luciano Savaral. He was on target for a much stronger finish tonight, but uh, sometimes that's how late cautions go. 17th in the championship is Alessandro Rossini, the very popular Italian, continuing to pile on the points. Back in 18th, you'll find another fan favorite as Zelda Ashby continues a good season for Black Diamond Racing there in car 55. After a slow start to the year, Tony Durbin sits 19th and Apo Anselmi rounds out the top 20. He's actually tied with Greg Woodard for 20th place, however he holds the tiebreaker. His best finish is a third compared to Woodard's fourth. After tonight, there's no substantial changes to the Independence Trophy standings. Long, Scott, Rollins, and Pure Pura simply haven't had enough races to build up enough points to really make an impact on the standings so far. But they'll have an opportunity to do so the next time the TM Master Cup Series is in action, which will be at the Ohio Motor Speedway for the Round of Ohio. The series goes back to its roots, short track racing. If you'd like to watch some previous events in the series, check out this list over here. Or check out these videos from friends of the show. Or if you'd like to be social, join the Discord.